Hello everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Weekend Musings. So in this episode, I wanted to spend some time and do a deeper dive into how Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving works. Um, we have a lot of different concepts around how these self-driving or autonomous vehicles are functioning from the inside or like what, what algorithm are, are running behind these technology. Uh, but specifically about Tesla, um, as they have their own proprietary algorithm, uh, I as an outsider would not have access to which algorithms is being put or used inside their technology or in their cars. But what I have done is I have um, like went through various different publications from Tesla. Um, I have went through some of the presentations from Andrich Karpathy, who is the director in machine learning at Tesla. And I have accumulated all this information, which is available online about uh, like self-driving cars and especially Tesla technology and made this presentation. Uh, this is sort of an add on to what you guys would have seen in the previous video uh, where I had given a walkthrough on how Tesla autopilot works and we had driven through Big Sur and seen how the auto steering um, brake acceleration everything works in the car while it's on autopilot. So hope this session is helpful for you. If you do have any questions more than what I have shown in the presentation, feel free to leave that in the comments. Uh, I would definitely try my best to answer your questions. Um, as I mentioned, their technology is proprietary. Tesla or for that matter, any other car's technology and the algorithm, the features, the parameters, the hyperparameters, whatever they've used is proprietary. And it's not for anyone to have access to. So nobody really knows the exact crux or like the nits and bits of how it works. All we know about is what are the basic high level concepts and how this technology has been designed. So this presentation is again going to be a technical deep dive on how the, it is designed and will not really emphasize on uh, you know uh, nits and bits of it talking about hey maybe this is this is how the feature engineering was done or maybe this uh, this is the different data sets which was used so it's not going to be focusing on that and it's going to be focusing on what is the technology used to power power autopilot so let's start talking about machine learning in Tesla. And as I mentioned, this is going to be a deep dive into uh, learning how the technology in Tesla works. As we know that there are two sections in, in Tesla's driving assistant technology, which is autopilot and full self-driving. Autopilot is something which is currently enabled in all the cars. And full self-driving is something which is on purchase and only available in beta versions because of various different compliances uh, that exist. Talking about autopilot, there are three main features which are, which are available in autopilot. One is the car is able to auto accelerate. Two, the car is able to make the decisions on when it needs to brake. And three, it is able to maintain its lane. So if you have uh, used autopilot yourself, you would know and you would know that as soon as you put the car on autopilot, it starts to maintain the lane. It would keep going on in the same lane for as long as you want until either the car comes uh, to an obstacle or you yourself uh, either press the accelerator or brake or take the car out of the autopilot. So the purpose of autopilot is sort of a cruise control where you want to drive for really long distances and you don't have to change lanes or take any turns, you can put your car on autopilot and the autopilot technology will make sure that it's maintaining the lane. While maintaining the lane, there is an auto steer feature, if you know of it. In auto, uh, auto steer, what happens is, uh, naturally the ro roads are not straight, right? Like if you are driving for 15 miles in the same lane, the road is not going to be straight. There are going to be curves and turns uh, which the car needs to make. And in that those situations, the car is enabled to do auto steering. So all the uh, twists and turns on the road that you see will be done by Tesla automatically. The next thing, as I was mentioning, is a full self-driving. Full self-driving is currently in a beta version. Full self-driving is something which uh, the owners have to buy as a software uh, add-on. Um, and it is currently not available for everyone to use. It is only available for very small batch of users to test on a beta version. And uh, currently I am in California and uh, the regulations do not permit 
cars to be full self driving the reason behind is that uh, the technology has not been completely tested uh, at least that's what the government thinks and they want like to eradicate even that 1% of chance that a car or a human might go uh, through an accident if there is a uh, if there is a technical error or if there is uh, any issues because of the full self driving technology so there's a lot of debate going on there's a lot of technological enhancements companies are trying to build better models uh, companies are trying to push their boundaries to make sure that the the models that they're working is full proof um it is definitely going to take time at least that's that's what i believe it's going to be taking time um if you are trying to compare human error uh, caused accidents versus cars cause accidents there's a huge lot of difference a lot of people ask me that hey like uh, you know when a human is driving a human may also make errors and he might cause accidents but the difference here is that if a car is causing accidents there's a lot of uh, technicalities with respect to insurance who has to take the liability uh, how would the person who is uh the victim of the accident going to be covered so there's a lot of uh, different pieces which needs to be enhanced insurance companies needs to come together they have to make pacts with these uh, vehicle companies they have to change a lot of their policies etc to accommodate something like a full self driving and that's that's why it's uh, it's taking time so let's come back and talk about what the full self driving has right now so uh, full self driving is basically telling the car that hey uh, take me to this point so the car is able to redirect uh, redirect the vehicle from point a to point b let's say you're going to put the address of a restaurant which is uh, near your place what the car is doing is it's going to of course be accelerating braking that's that's given uh, apart from that the car is able to say uh, take itself out of the parking get change the lanes take proper left right turns if it needs to take a u turn it would be stopping at all the stop signs uh, it would be adhering to all the traffic lights it would be uh, taking an exit wherever it's needed and it will also auto park so i have tried some of the um, some of these capabilities in a full self driving uh, of course in a beta version and it was insane how to to see how it looks like um again as i was mentioning like there's a lot of algorithms a lot of different things which is going behind full self driving it's not just one model which is able to handle all these different things for example uh, just one of the things which i was watching in uh, andrish karpati's um, video i would definitely put a link to that in the description below in one of the videos he was talking about how they had to you know design a really really sophisticated model to detect stop signs because stop signs in various different cities and various different states could be looking very different at different points point in time some of them could have lights around it some of it could probably would have fallen and tilted to an angle somebody might be holding a stop sign uh, and if the person is actually keeping it up that would mean that the stop sign is active and if the person is just like holding it and hanging out with it then the stop sign is not real at that point in time so there are a lot of variations just for your model to detect a stop sign so there have been so much data which has gone behind training these models and according to andrich kapati in his presentation he says that uh, what they are doing currently is the cameras which are installed in their tesla cars right now are still capturing all these images and they are Uh, continuously improving their models to detect these different signs these traffic lights which might be hidden behind a branch or there could be leaves fallen on top of it or there could be bad weather conditions etc so your model needs to be really sophisticated to even understand and uh, identify each and every of these different signs and indicators which are available on the road for the car to be able to take a fully autonomous decision for itself and that's that's exactly why i was mentioning that there's no one model which is running behind this entire technology there are various different models which are interacting with each other there are image recognition models there are um, like agent based models which are actually processing all these sensor data and taking the right decision now these agent based models are now getting uh, synced with the different mechanical parts of the car so there are various different pieces which are being attached in in the full self driving technology in tesla 
So um, let's break this down into two specific parts. One is computer vision, and the second is decision making agent. So computer vision is through what you're processing and getting the most important information that is required for you to make a judgment on what to do or what action to take. So within computer vision, you have various different sensors. You have uh, the camera sensor, you might have uh, radar, etc., which is able to gather all these information from the environment. Things like, which is the car nearby me? Which is the car in front of me? Is there any car behind me or in the adjacent lanes? Is there any stop signs near me? Is there any uh, traffic lights? Uh, whether the traffic light is green, yellow, red? Are there any uh, traffic lights for taking a right turn or is it a free right turn and things like that? So all these information needs to be fed in to the, uh, to the main model or to the decision-making model through various different sensors. Currently, uh, Tesla is pretty much powered with every sensor that is required to uh, build a fully autonomous uh, or like a fully self-driving car. As I was mentioning earlier that um, full self-driving is something which is a software update and which is a paid software update. Currently, the car is powered by all the sensors and all the hardware technology that is really needed for the full self-driving. And uh, if you want your car to be self-driving, all you need to do is the software update or uh, like um, enhance your software after paying, after paying for it. So yeah, and the second part, as we saw here, uh, is the decision-making agent. Once you have collected all these data from different sensors, it could be uh, like camera sensors, which is able to detect everything around the car. It could be uh, it could be uh, like distance sensor, which is able to understand what is the nearest obstacle to the car. If the car is actually going to be touching anything uh, close close by it, not just like around the car, but probably on the top of the car as well. So all these sensors are sending in streaming data to one server or like one um, central system. And that's where it's being collected. And now it's going to be streamlined to various different models, which are using this data to produce more insights out of it. For example, uh, if there is a camera sensor, it is able to take different pictures around the car. It sees that there are various different signs on the road. Now those pictures are being collected to a main server. And now from the main server, these pictures are going to be sent to uh, image recognition models, which is able to identify and tell us that, hey, is this a no, no U-turn zone? Is it a no left zone? Is it a no right zone? Is it a merging lane zone? Is it a stop sign? Is it a slippery road, etc.? So all these signs are being detected by the uh, by the camera sensors and then fed into different models for it to identify and classify and tell us the label for this particular uh, sign on the road. Now the second part is once we have identified everything around the car. Currently, let's say now the car knows each and everything which is going around it. It knows what is the car near uh, near it in the front of the lane on the sides of the lane and uh, like probably a few distance ahead of it or a few distance behind it and then it needs to make a decision right it, let's say the car needs to change lanes to a left lane then it needs to understand that uh, i probably have a car approaching me from behind then uh, i need to make this uh, change of lane carefully or i don't see any car so i can seamlessly make the change of the lane things like that so making the decision that it needs to change lane when it has to reach a certain destination is what's done by the decision making agent if we have put in a location that we have to go to a certain restaurant, it, the car might need to take an exit, right? We are on a highway and the car might need to take an exit. So making all these decisions and combining the GPS data, combining the maps data with the current environmental scenario is what is done in the decision-making agent. On this is where I need to reach. This is what is the current situation where I am. And this is the current situation and on how the road conditions look like and how do I make this certain decision. So um, if you're looking at the vision-based approach, so <clears throat> what Andrich Kapati had mentioned is that Tesla is not using a LiDAR technology. They don't have the LiDAR uh, sensors installed on top of the car. What you see in most of the other cars, if they are using any such uh, self-driving technology, Tesla is completely built using cameras. 
So Tesla only uses camera or like image information to ex extract all these details about the surrounding of the car. And then it creates, uh, creates a much sophisticated version of an interpretable, um, interpretable environmental scenario and then uses that to power the decision-making agent. So it doesn't have the regular LiDAR, neither does it have any HD maps, which is being created with LiDAR. So it's a completely vision-based approach used only uh, by cameras. Now, the next thing, as I was mentioning, like there are cameras or like sensors installed in all different sides of the car, even on, uh, if it can even detect if the car top of the car is approaching something and it might hit a barrier. So if, if there's no uh, enough clearance for your car, the, the sensors will also detect that. So with various different sensors, as you see on the screen, on the left side, you can see that the car is able to analyze what's in front of it, what's on the left right side of it, and what's in the blind spot or on the uh, rear edge on the left and right side of the car. So all these information are being taken, taken in using the cameras as a computer vision or like as a vision component. And then it's being broken down into multiple different chunks of data. And these multiple chunks of data are sent through different models. One, of, one set of uh, data would be sent to understand what are the moving objects in and around the car? What are the lines of the roads? Where are the edges of the road? Is there any merging which uh, the car is able to see at the front of it? Is there any uh, exits which the car is able to see on the front of it? Is there any one-way lane the car is able to see in front of it? And things like that. So all this different information is sent to different, different models and different models are able to give a classification or a, a, a regression um, values out of these models. So you might be wondering like, okay, classification is probably being used to identify the stop sign or to identify whatever different signs are there on the road. It might be used to understand what's the, what's the light on the, on the traffic signal, et cetera, but where could be regression used? So that's a very, a very tricky and, uh, and an interesting topic. So I, I came across this and I was amazed that even when a car is making turns, there is a mathematical way of understanding how much of a turn does the car need to make to maintain its lane? Or how much degree of a turn does the car need to make if it's making a left or a right turn? Uh, in the United States, your right is the closer right and left is the farther left. So in all these scenarios, the angle at which the car needs to move, the distance the car needs to maintain from the edges of the road is calculated uh, dynamically whenever the car is driving. And that's where all these models are being used to understand the current scenario and make a more informed decision. So um, another interesting part that I came across is uh, you might ask that, hey, uh, you know, LiDAR technology is used so that we can create these heat maps so we can understand the depth. That's, that's a really interesting part that I found here, that Tesla is using a technology where the images that they are capturing is in turn being converted into heat maps or, or the depth maps, as you could call it, so that the results of these camera images can match to something what you get from a LiDAR. And it is able to produce high definition 3D maps, which the car is able to use to drive itself. Why is LiDAR important? Because, of course, you need a more 3D judgment of the car rather than just having a 2D, two-dimensional judgment. And that's where Tesla's technology is able to capture all this information in a 2D space and convert it to a 3D space or to a heat map. So that is really useful. And uh, probably one of the reasons which I feel uh, Tesla didn't choose to have LiDAR technology is because it's really expensive. Cameras, putting in camera sensors is, is pretty cheap and uh, it's not something which is too sophisticated to be integrated into, into any sort of uh, uh, AI system where, where they're using various different like, uh, you know, machine learning chips into, into their systems. So camera is a very cheap and uh, easy option 
compared to a LiDAR. And uh, with Tesla's uh, innovative technology, they are able to produce the output of what a LiDAR can get you just using the camera sensors. So that's that's something really amazing. And of course, like this, uh, these information on these slides uh, have been gathered by uh, by Andrich Karpati's presentation in PyTorch's uh, DevCon conference. And uh, I would be sharing that link in the description below. So if you would want to hear to his conference, uh, hear, hear to his presentation, feel free to do that. Now, the next thing. Uh, let's talk about what are the building blocks of this autonomous driving? Like, what is the whole picture here, right? The end-to-end -end picture. Initially, we start with sensors. In this case, we don't have a LiDAR, but I have just charted down all the different kinds of sensors that could be used in a situation where we are trying to build autonomous driving. Now, this section is not dedicated uh, specifically talking about Tesla. This is generically for any autonomous driving technology. So you have a set of sensors which you are using to take in the data, which you are using to get in the feed of all the environmental uh, details which is going around in the car. The second is object detection and classification. So as I mentioned, once you collect the data, you need to identify what it is. You need to make sense out of it. So it's not just the raw images that you're going to capture and somehow it's going to make sense. No, it's it needs to be going through some models. It needs to be uh, identified, identified in a more uh, streamlined manner. Uh, it needs to be identified by these machine learning algorithms that have been built and that can independently tag and tell us that what's happening around the car. The third section is vehicle maneuvers. So this is where we need to understand how, we, how do we plan the path? How do we tell the car where it needs to take a left, where it needs to take a right, where does it need to take an exit, where does it need to change lanes, etc. So for us to tell the car what to do is an important task and that data is being supplied through the object classification or detection that we have done in the previous stage. Once we understand what's going around the car, we have a better uh, ability to predict what the car should or how the car should take a particular maneuver. The final section is the actual control. The actual control is basically once you have a software understanding, let me put it this way. Once you have a software understanding or like you have an algorithmic result on what the car needs to do, now you have to mechanically connect it with the parts of the car. Now you need to connect the results of these uh, output coming in from the model to the steering, to the accelerator, to the brake, to the, uh, to the engine of the car, etc. So controlling that comes in the last phase, where you are actually like taking in this uh, soft output into something that's hard and more tangible, and you can actually see the car doing it. Now, uh, if I were to break down the just the like vehicle maneuver part, or like how this structure, uh, like after we have collected the data, basically. So if we were to talk about once the data is collected, what now, right? What models are being used? So this is again a generic, uh, a generic template or on how uh, companies or like how research has been going around in autonomous driving, and this does not lay parallels to anything that Tesla is doing. So in the first section uh, for object detection and classification, convolutional neural network is one of the best techniques uh, for us to identify objects, label them, do like multi-class classification, uh, identify multiple labels in the same images and do object detection, etc. So a convolutional neural network can be used to get the uh, camera feed and tag these images with labels. Now, the second part is something which I am super interested in is using reinforcement learning. As I mentioned to you, uh, when the car needs to take a turn, not all left turns or not all right turns are the same. Some of the lanes could be a two lane roads. Some of the lanes could be a four lane roads. Some of the roads could be one ways. So the angle at which the car needs to turn to actually create that turn is different uh, in different scenarios. And that's where you need a more dynamic models, which is able to adapt to the exact situation where you and your car are in and make that decision. That's where reinforcement learning plays a huge role. Um, I have been researching in reinforcement learning for years now, and I have seen various different use cases of reinforcement learning 
uh, not just in playing games of course like that's how it started like that's how people started coming to know about reinforcement learning and what it could do and how the processing uh, with reinforcement learning this, this strategic decision making is much more stronger than what a humans can do uh, some of the other things that I've been uh, looking for is supply chain automation in terms of uh, making hardware decisions where where the knobs needs to be turned in a certain industrial setting or in the uh, stock trading market. Uh, my, one of my personal projects that I had worked on in uh, making a decision agent to predict stocks. So reinforcement learning can be thought of a strategic machine learning model. In, in a minute, I'll uh, give you a better overview on what reinforcement learning is. If you don't uh, know much about it and want to learn, I will definitely be putting in some more resources for you to go through. Reinforcement learning is a policy building machine learning algorithm. Reinforcement learning is not something which does an ad hoc uh, model tagging or like an ad hoc prediction, like what you see in regular classification or regression models. What reinforcement learning does is a feedback loop of decisions. It is uh, something which understands the context, understands the past of the data that has been uh, fed into it, makes a decision, understands how this decision would affect the future parameters. And on, on the fly, it keeps making multiple decisions on the go. And when it's taking a new decision, it again looks at the past. So reinforcement learning, again, is a huge um, uh, a huge algorithm built on top of Markov decision processes. And I would again give you more uh, resources for you to read about that. So here reinforcement learning can be used for the vehicles maneuvers and path planning where the cars need to take turns or take exits or various different scenarios that we spoke about earlier. Um, and specifically the third part is recurrent neural network where we are doing the minor uh, minor uh, regression or like the minor decision of the angle or the the inches how far the car should be turning etc so that specific trajectory prediction uh, on how much inch should the car go further and then take a right or a left is being made by recurrent neural networks again recurrent neural networks is something which comes with a recall or a, a time component to it so that's why it's, it's really important because the car not only understands its current situation, but is also able to uh, have a recall memory of where it was a second ago. So that is something which is very important because when you're taking a turn, you need to know where you were a second earlier. And that's when you can make a complete, uh, like completely proper trajectory to make a turn. So these are the three sections. Convolution neural network is something which can run independently. There's no time component to it. There's no pre-context to the data that the models need to know. Hence, convolutional network work great in terms of doing multi-class classifications, multi-object identification in the images, et cetera. Reinforcement learning is for strategy, strategic decisions. It is for making policies. It is for making um, recurring policies. It is for making uh, uh, timestamp-based policies over and over again and making these decisions over and over again. A recurrent neural network is a uh, time-based uh, artificial neural network which uh, where uh, there is a recall memory to it and that's what is used to understand the vehicular trajectory now um now as i mentioned uh, i wanted to talk a little bit about reinforcement learning because that's one of the major uh, context or like the component of autonomous driving because this is where the decision making is coming into play uh the car is able to see the back of the back from uh, from the left side and it sees a car approaching so the car starts braking itself and once that car has passed it again is able to uh, feature in the data coming from the rear side rear left side of the car and now that it sees that there's a clear way it's it starts drifting towards uh, the left and changing lanes so that decision, which is uh, as minor as you know, few milliseconds, is really important. That's where reinforcement learning comes into play, on when to take the decision and what decision decision to take. So if I were to explain reinforcement learning in a very simple layman terms, it is understanding and observing the environment. So basically, collecting the data 
currently i am in this situation i'm going to observe the environment these are the various environmental parameters that i have now i have a set of actions to take i have been given a choice that i can choose between doing a b c or d now i need to make a decision that based on the current situation that i am in which decision should i be taking now it's not just a guesswork where you are going to choose one of the four options but it's a more uh, more um, more but it's more of an optimization problem where you're trying to understand that if i were to take option a what would be my short term and long term reward now this reward is something which is designed Uh, according to various different problems in this particular scenario uh, my reward could be a negative reward for crashing the car and a positive reward for not crashing the car and the rewards could be designed based on how much uh, how much of a space are you uh, maintaining from various different cars and how easily could you actually make that turn without breaking too much so reinforcement learning model is being built by uh, with an agent which is basically a artificial neural network or it could be a deep neural network um and the state is basically everything that you're observing from the current situation so environment is everything around you and out of the environment there are only certain data that you're pulling in as state that is representing the most important section of the environment so environment is all different variables which is existing in the in the in the space and state is something which is going to be affected by your action so environment contains of uh, information that could or could not change based on your action so for example if i am taking a particular left or right turn there are certain variables which would be changing if i am making that decision whereas there are certain variables which are not going to be changing for example if there is a traffic light if there is a stop sign these are some of the environmental variables which are not going to change because of my decision or because of the reinforcement learning agent's decision so they are part of the environment but they are not part of the state so within environment the variables which are going to be affected by the action of the agent is called state so now based on the state we design a model which is able to identify which action to be which action needs to be taken and once that action is taken there are certain different changes in the environment so now why do you, why do i say the environment is going to be changing is again because of two effects uh me taking a action or the agent taking an action is directly going to affect the state of the car and it's going to indirectly affect the environment because now you are in a different vicinity now you have already taken a turn and now you are in a different vicinity so the environmental variables around you have changed there could be no stop signs anymore there could be a different traffic signal now there could be a different sign now so the environmental variable near your car has changed so you're basically trying to take decisions based on all these different factors and you're trying to optimize based on this reward uh, reward optim reward function that you that you will be designing so this is reinforcement learning is something um a technique the way how humans learn we uh, we try to observe our environment we try to take different actions we try to see what uh, ends up in a good or bad action and then we try to uh, reemphasize and like rethink on where did we go wrong and what uh, what decision could i have made differently and then we try to analyze that okay this particular action had a short term negative reward or a short term positive re reward but had a long term negative reward or vice versa so the way humans think the way humans treat these different actions and we how we treat the reward function is how these models are being designed as well so i just wanted to go over different maneuvers that are handled by a reinforcement learning model it could be adaptive cruise control where it's trying to maintain a certain speed or it's trying to maintain a certain lane with changing speeds with uh, auto acceleration and auto braking it could be overtaking uh, different cars which are there in different lanes it could be avoiding traffic congestions or if it is actually stuck in a particular traffic congestion it would try to get out of it it would be merging onto highways it could be merging off the highways onto an exit ramp it could be able to understand that there's a narrowing of the lane and uh, maneuver the car accordingly 
it would be able to understand that there's a construction uh, zone which is nearby and how to maneuver across and around the construction zone. Uh, if it uh, comes across a, per a particular accident, then it needs to understand that how do you pass that situation? How do you stop at traffic lights? How do you stop it, uh, at the stop sign? How do you take a um, left or right turn at the intersection? And how do you merge at different roundabouts? So these are some of the different vehicular man maneuvers that can be taken uh, by reinforcement learning models. There are, of course, like many more, and I've only like um, listed out some of these. And just for you to understand what kind of decisions a reinforcement learning model can take. Now let's wrap the session up with, uh, with the topic of where, where are we heading? So why do we need this autonomous uh, self-driving vehicle at all? One is to automate the driving, of course, because we want to avoid the human errors which are caused during driving. Some of the time uh, people are driving for like say hundreds of kilometers in a stretch and they might be feeling sleepy, they might be feeling drowsy, they might be, uh, they might not feel attentive and they might just not like driving for such long distances. So all these result in human errors and result in accidents. We have seen like thousands and thousands of accidents happening every day across the globe. And there are so many different casual casualties that we see. And we are trying to avoid uh, all the human errors by using the technology and automating the process of driving. Again, number two is giving mobility to more people. So people like me who might not really enjoy driving or might not even want to learn how to drive can still have the accessibility and the mobility to um, go from, from point A to point B without taking a public transport or uh, having someone else drive for them. They can have their own vehicle and they can have this technology which is enabling them to drive from point A to point B without actually doing it for themselves. And the third is, this is something that can lead to a fully autonomous vehicle. The difference between fully autonomous, like the driving technology and fully autonomous vehicle is the driving technology still wants a human to be sitting in the passenger seat. Uh, in, uh, it requires a person to be sitting in the driver's seat and uh, taking control in case needed. So this is still um, a little bit less mature than what a fully autonomous vehicle is because in a fully autonomous vehicle, there is no human sitting inside the vehicle. It's a completely uh, so a completely siloed vehicle, which is able to drive itself from point A to point B, uh, just using some of the software commands. And this could be something very useful in, in, um, in hindsight, because if you think about it, um, things like food deliveries or package deliveries uh, in all different e-commerce will be done seamlessly and would not require any uh, human involvement in driving the packages from place A to place B. So that's something which is which will be really beneficial for a lot of different industries and could save them a lot of money. And that's where we are heading to with autonomous driving technology, where we are trying to do a full self-driving with humans in the car might lead us to have uh, be in a place where we have a completely autonomous vehicle that's driving itself without any human intervention. So thank you so much guys for uh, joining us today. And thank you so much for hanging in till the end of the video. If you have, uh, if you really enjoyed the video, do share it with your network and do remember to subscribe because uh, that's when you're gonna get updates of the latest videos, which are going to be posted online. Uh, stay tuned for the next video and leave any comments if you have any questions, any clarifications, or if you have any recommendations on how I can make better videos. So thank you so much and have a great day.